right, I want to personally welcome everybody here on tonight. Welcome, 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 welcome. Again, again, let's welcome. Thank God, as we always say, this is the day. Y'all know the routine. This is the day that the Lord have made. I will do what? I will rejoice and be glad in it. And so, amen, I'm not, it won't be no different on tonight. This is that day that the Lord have made. And we have every right, every reason to rejoice and be glad in it. God has been good to each and every one of us. I'm sure we can we can attest to that. God has really been good to us. He's been kind. He's been merciful. He's been long-suffering. As uh, some would say, he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. I, now, I can say that for a fact. The Lord has been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And so since that is the case, we owe him praise. We owe him glory. We owe him. We owe him. We owe him. If you was in church, I'd be telling you right now, look at your neighbor and tell him, you owe God. You owe God. You owe God a praise. You owe God a praise. What can we give the Lord for all that he done for us? Amen. Waking us up this morning what can you give him for that starting us on our way what can we give him for that we can pay him for that david said if i had ten thousand tongues and i praised him with every one of them i'm gonna run out of tongues before i run out of reasons amen and thank god for that for the for a few moments amen i just wanted to uh, make sure that everybody's good make sure that everybody can hear good we're going to just do a little quick little roll call and i'm going to ask you just for a brief second if you would just say praise the lord so i'm going to ask you if you would just unmute your microphone and just say praise the lord and then i'll as i acknowledge you and that'll be a quick little test for us to make sure that we're good to go uh, so that when uh first lady when i turn it over to her Amen. There may be times during her presentation that she asked you to unmute your mic for some reason. You know the routine. So, uh, Sister Hibley, if you wouldn't mind just saying praise the Lord to the saints so that we at least know that you connected. Praise the Lord. All right. And you can mute your microphone. Amen. Evangelist Clemens, if you wouldn't mind unmuting your microphone and saying praise the Lord to the saints. Praise the Lord. All right. And you can mute your microphone. Let's see. Who else? Who else do I have on the line? Let's see. Let me get my list up here. Uh, Mother Walker, if you can go ahead and unmute your mic and say praise the Lord to the saints. Praise the Lord, saints. See, y'all, she's here. She's here. You can mute your microphone. Amen. Let's see who else is on here. I see Sister Brenda, you online. If you can unmute yours and say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, you can mute yours. <laughs> Let's see who else. Uh, did I get Evangelist Pamela? If not, I'll get her again. Let's say Evangelist Pamela, for the record, can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord, everyone. And she's there, y'all. She's there. Let's see who else. Did I did I get everybody? I'm seeing Sister, Sister Allen. Allen. Uh, Sister Allen, are you? Praise right? the Lord, but I still don't see nobody but Sister Brenda. You see, Sister Brenda, nobody else. It's something with your swipe because you must be on the last page. Uh, keep working with that swipe, and you're going you're gonna to find us. You're going to find us, and it's going to amaze you because you're going to see probably about four people on your on your screen at one time. But don't stop until you at least get uh, – keep. But in the meantime, if you wouldn't, go back and mute your microphone, or I'll do it for you. Because I want to make sure you can move, mute my ass, so it won't right. bring up everybody. Let me see if I can do that. I'm doing something wrong. We're gonna get you. There's a son right there. He is. There's a son. A son <laughs> gonna help you out. If yeah. You would, help her and mute her microphone for <laughs> her. Go ahead and mute the you mic. Say, yeah, I have a good... And then, if you could, if you could assist her so she can see everybody. We would we would be gladly appreciate that. So it seemed like he muted her. He muted everything. <laughs> That's all right. Thank God. All right. I'm going to ask everyone if you would just bow your head in a word of prayer. We go to God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the mighty name of Jesus, God. We thank you 
Lord, we honor you. We praise you. We give your name the praise. We bless you in this place right now. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. We thank you for food and shelter. We thank you, God, for being clothed in our right mind. God, we know left from right, up from down, fast from slow, and God is only because of you. We thank you so much, oh God, that you allowed the death angel to pass over our house and gave us another opportunity to gather together with our, our, our brothers and our sisters, Lord, that we might hear what it is that you have to say to us out of your word. Ask that you will bless the instructor on today. God, give her the insight that's required to share your word with your people. Oh God, I ask that you will bless us. You know the challenges that we have technology-wise, but God, we're looking to you that you, Lord God, will help us to overcome that we might be able to get out of this lesson what it is that you have prepared for us, oh God. Bless those that are yet still to connect Bless, oh God, and guide the hands, Lord, that we might be able to give your name the praise. And it is our prayer for this evening. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I am going to get out of the way so that at least the First Lady will have a few moments to kind of greet you before going into her lesson. I'm excited because... I at least got a chance to take a look at it, just to at least get it, man. And I'm telling you, you we are in for a blessing, a blessing on tonight. tonight. So, so without, without further, further ado, let, let me see, me see somebody, 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 somebody turned their mic on. Oh, that's, oh, that's Sister, Sister Gavin. Gavin. And and before, before I, I click, over, click over, can you just can say, you just say praise, Sister Gavin? Praise the Lord, family. She, see, she there, y'all. And you can go ahead Amen. and mute your microphone again. Amen. And can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, and you can mute yours. So I'm going to ask everyone, if you haven't already, go ahead and mute your microphone. Okay. The, the only ones that should be unmuted is First Lady as the instructor. And you know what? I'm going a, I'm to a mute mine once she gets started. So at oh. this, yes, anybody um, else? I, I can't hear you and, uh, and, and Lady Fields. You all are very low. We hear you loud and clear. Mm -hmm. Everybody sure is you... real loud and clear, but... You too. I can't hear. Uh, not quite sure why. Why you? I don't know why, why I can't hardly hear you. Everything I have is turned up. How? How? Can, can you hear? Everybody... Can you hear me now? I hear can... you now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But Pastor I'll... Fields, I hardly hear him. You hardly hear me. Hey, Amen. Well, that's all right. On tonight, I won't. But everybody else, can you hear? Okay. If you can hear, okay, give me a thumbs up. You can hear me, okay. You can hear First Lady, okay. All right, well, I'm going to get off the line, and at least you can hear First Lady Vandas Clemens and, uh, okay. for tonight. That's the only one you re really need to hear. <laughs> so that All being right. said, I'm going to turn you over into the hands of uh, First Lady, and she's going to do what she do best. In Jesus' name, pray for her. Be blessed. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are, we are so honored. Amen. To be here on tonight, we praise God for our pastor and each of you. We have a good one tonight. We have a good one tonight that is entitled Three Days Deep. And if you think of Three Days Deep, who do you think about? Jonah. That's what you think about. And that's what we're going to uh, be talking about tonight. The Lord has blessed me to come up with a full color presentation. So you all get ready. We're going to take a ride together. We're going to learn the word of God. Um, one thing that I am excited about is to encourage you to walk into your call. Whatever it is that God has called you to do, walk into the call. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about on tonight. So let me bring my screen up. Let me share my screen. So every, everybody can see. Yeah, I don't know Give me one second here. All right. Can everybody see that? Wait, you put, give me a finger if you can see it. it. Should be full color. Everybody, thumbs up. All righty. All right, so let me knock this back. Okay. 
The title of our lesson um, for the Sunday school this time is called Three Days Deep. And it's taken from Jonah 4 and 4. Then said the Lord, doest thou well to be angry? And when I read this lesson, it had hit me like a tongue of brick, a brick, because there are some things in my life as well that I need to consider when I'm dealing with certain people or or the call of God or uh, or just doing the right thing. So the beautiful thing about this lesson is that all of you will be able to pull something out of the lesson for you. And I, I wanna say this before I get started. This lesson um, is not, uh, is not made to go after one or two people. This lesson is for all of us. I wanna make that clear. So I don't want anybody to think that, oh man, she must be talking about me or, or this is, for, take the lesson and put on your spiritual caps and apply it to your life because it's gonna hit us all because it hit me because there are some things that I'm dealing with in my life. All of us are dealing with the call of God yeah. and what it is that we should be doing. Yeah. And, at, and at the same time, we okay. want to make sure that we do God right in the call that he called us in. So if you see the, the um, if you're looking at the, I'm trying to move you all out a little bit. Okay. So if you all look at the, Sister Gavin, I mean, Gavin, can you mute your mic? Sister Gavin? Sister Gavin? Let's see, I might be able to do it from here. Let me see. Hold on one minute. I can't, I can't seem to mute her. Okay. Well, if you look at the, if you look at the. Oh, that's okay. Sister Gavin? Sometimes I forget when I'm here and whenever I'm on. If you look at the picture, you would, you would kind of figure out what's going on. You see the, you see uh, Jonah, Jonah's name, you see the boat, you see the seas, you see him uh, uh, being tossed out of the boat by the people to the left, and you see the fish. Now, we have no idea what this fish yeah, looked like. Oh, but... yeah. Let me see if I can get past it to mute the phone. One second, let me send him a chat. Sister Gavin? Okay, I think we're okay. All right, three days deep. Um, and at the bottom, it says, profit overboard. Profit overboard, amen. And those of you that don't know, we heard of the story of um, jo uh, Jonah over that. Okay, let me see if I can, wait a minute. I, I gotta get in touch with Pastor. Hold on one second, everybody. Okay, profit overboard. I know you all have heard of the story of Jonah. You know, we've learned about Jonah when we was Jonah when we was growing up as little kids. How he was on the how he was running away from God and and ended up in the in the um in the mouth of a fish or a whale or have a way you want to put it. But we was never uh, it was never taught the deepness of it. And so those of you that don't know that that uh, Jonah was a prophet. He wasn't just your ordinary man, he was a prophet. And how God had wanted him this time, um, he gave him a job to do. And that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. Uh, 
Did you try sending her a message, first lady? I muted her. Okay. This is, I, I, I'll mute your mic, first lady. Yeah. All right. I was trying to give you a call. Okay, great. So that's what we're going to study tonight. We're going to study about Jonah. Amen. And make sure you have your Sunday school books. Um, I kind of followed it as much as I could. But, you know, we watch Superbook all the time. So I went and used Superbook's um, breakdown of our lesson tonight. But it's definitely extraordinary. Amen. Um, and if you can see, it's made by Superbook at the top. But Jonah 4 and 4 says, Then said the Lord, Doest thou well to be angry? And we will be dealing with anger. We will be dealing with uh, um, uh, dealing with the call from the Lord. And what happens when we don't accept the call, especially if you ask God for the call. Now, Jonah was a prophet. And if you notice, even in our scripture in this day and time, we always talk about the fivefold ministry. And he is part of the fivefold ministry. So out of all people, when the Lord had commanded him um, to go somewhere or to give a word or encouragement or warning, he should be one of the first ones to go. But let's look into the lesson and find out how much of a fight he put up. This brother put up a fight. He didn't want to go, but I'm going to show you in our slides and some of the <laughs> crazy things amen, that Jonah uh, was trying to uh, get away with. But before we even go into the lesson, um, I came up with four self-check questions. These questions hit me like a ton of brick bricks, and I'm being transparent, I'm being honest. So just to let you all know as well, be honest with yourself with each of these self-check questions. And we're going to, I'm just going to just click and you'll be able to see them. And I want you to think within yourself where you are with these self-check questions, because it's going to be important to, uh, to know those by the end of the presentation. All right. So this is a time to check yourself. The first one is, have anyone ever made you angry to the point that you just want God to punish them? Some of you all may say, no, not me. No, not me. I would never think and do that. But there are some of us that are or that may think that. So we want to make sure that we check ourselves when it comes to being angry. And like I said, as far as me, I'm being transparent. That's why I say each of these questions um, have really um, got to me. And I had to be honest with myself. And when you get done with, when we get done with our self check questions, when you pray next time and even in your fasting, you'll be able to tell God, I need you to work on me. If anybody's dealing with anger, ask God to deal with it. Ask God to change you. But it says, has, it, has anyone ever made you angry to the point that you just want God to punish them? A lot of times people make us so angry, we just want to see them gone. We want to see them. Uh, this may not be you or you. I'm just saying sometimes you want them off the, Lord, why are you not punishing them? Why are you not punishing them fast enough? I just want you to do something so they can be punished. You know, that's a self-check. So I want you to self-check yourself on that one. The next one is, does anyone in your family make you feel that they don't deserve your forgiveness, nor God's, but God still forgives you? A lot of times our family members may treat us wrong, may say something, may hurt our feelings, or it doesn't have to be a family member. It could be someone else. But sometimes when they talk to you that way or treat you that way, you feel as though they don't deserve you. I'm not forgiving you for none of this. That's what you tell the person. And your heart becomes hard, but you got to remember that you still want God to forgive you. So even in the Lord's prayer, the Lord's prayer talk about that. So when you're praying, it's okay to say, Lord, I need you to forgive me. But in the word, it says, don't forget in so many words to forgive others. And I know it's hard. So this is, and 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 trust me, all, all of this is in the lesson today. I'm telling you, this is a, going to be an a excellent lesson. Is it right for you to be angry at people when they don't even belong to you? And God wants you to witness to that person. You have some people that 
that treat you so bad sometimes that you have to realize that we don't belong to one another. We belong to God. We have to give an account to God with all of the different sins and all of the different ways that we think and the unforgiveness and the way that we treat um, one another. But can you imagine that the worst person that treated you the worst, the Lord told you to go back and witness to that person, not only that, but to come to your church, talked about you, dogged you out, put you down, called you all kind of names and, and, and said all these different things. But now you got to go back and witness to that person. That's a hard pill to swallow. That's a hard pill to swallow. Amen. And those, and that's also, we're going to talk about that in the lesson. Our last one says, what about a person that is so evil that you don't even want to be around them? You hate their guts. You're beginning to start building hatred. Even, even being saved and sanctified. Some people end up being evil. They end up being um, hatred among one another, unforgiving, all of those different things. So we just want to make sure that we do our self-check. So when we go into the lesson, we will be able to see who Noah is really, I mean, not Noah, Jonah is really about. Uh, Jonah is more than just being swallowed up by a fish. He's, it's, it's more deeper than that. So we're going to study study that, uh, study about Jonah. So remember those self-check questions, because after our class, we're going to just go back through them again. Amen. All right. So if you notice that there's a map to the left that kind of shows you the, the, uh, the journey of Jonah. And we're going to talk about the history. Amen. Nineveh is called a great city, according to John 1 and 2. And I'm going to read that. And that's in your lesson. It says, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. That's no, vice, uh, verse two. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. So you got to remember that Nineveh is, uh, is, a, is a great city. Even uh, well, we'll get to that. Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, says John 3 and 3. At the time, Prophet Jonah visited the city. It had a population of 123,000 people. I'm just giving you a background a little bit. Nineveh is the oldest and most populous city of the ancient Assyrian Empire, situated on the east bank of the Tigris River, and encircled by the modern city of Moscow, Iraq. Think about Iraq even today. According to the historians, Nineveh is an ancient city in the present day of Iraq. That is something to know. If you look on your map, there's a little circle there at the bottom to the right, and it shows you Europe, Africa, and it shows you the, uh, the Arabic, Arabic nations. So you should know that Nineveh a man is a place, um, and if uh, let me say this, if you think about Iraq in this day and time, you all know how Iraq is. You know how um, uh, how horrible that even the, some of the things that they're doing now. So that's the same thing with Nineveh. This is where Jonah's, and I'm gonna get in too too much. I'm getting ahead of myself, but this is where Jonah. It's, it was asked, I mean, was told by God to head in order to talk to them and tell them what thus said the Lord. All right. If anybody have any questions, just lift your hands. All right. Prophet Jonah and what God called him to do. Look at this map. Look at this map. You have Tarish to the left, which is 2,500 miles. You have Joppa. And to the right, you have 550 miles. And then you have Nineveh. Uh, I can't pronounce that. Jonah did everything he could to get away from the call of God. He was in Joppa. So you see where Joppa is, right in the middle. But he was supposed to go to Nineveh. Nineveh is 550 miles. But look what this, this dude did. He decided that he was going to go the opposite way. And if you notice, it's 2,500 miles away to the left. When he's supposed to go to the right to, to Nineveh, but he didn't want to do that. 
He wanted to go the opposite way. Now here he is in the middle of Joppa. Instead of him doing what God said do, and I won't get into that until we see the slide, and you can see the distance. You have 55, 550,000 uh, miles to the right. Now, which one would you take if the Lord asked you to do something? There would be no way you would do 2,500 miles, which is probably about two to three months in walking foot and on a camel because they didn't have cars back then. They didn't have the Chevys back then. They, 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 uh, didn't have the Mercedes. They either had to walk or get on that camel or get a horse. But that's a long way from Nineveh, which is 550 uh, miles. All right, let's look at, let's take a few minutes and look at this. Look how beautiful uh, the great city was. It just, it almost kind of makes you want to go there for vacation. You've got palm trees, you got the canal, if you look all the way in the back, you've got this, this palace that's kind of surrounded by water. And you've got all these beautiful streets and just a beautiful place. Look like that you may look at the mountains in the back, the mountains in the back. It just looked like a resort that you would like to go. That's just how beautiful it was. It was one of the largest cities and most affluent cities. Now think about Iraq at the same time. Amen. Affluent is having a deal of money. This place was loaded with, loaded with money. Very rich. Didn't need anything. Everything was in themselves. They had all the gold, all the gold bars, all the paper money, everything. That they had it all. They had it all going on. Very rich. Walking around with their turbones around their head, with their head up and just walking around. Probably had an attitude. We're going to talk about that. Walking around with the attitude, head up in the air, don't want to talk to anybody. Just going, just walking down the, uh, walking down the streets, being who they are. Had new streets and new squares. The, 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 the uh, canal system was with a wall, within a wall area and built a vast and stunning palaces and statues of pure gold. This place was totally rich. What's going on now? Iraq is totally rich, even today. Iraq is rich. They just greedy. That's all it is. All right. Now, since we talked about the beautiful part of Nineveh, now we get ready to see the horrible, evil part of them, which leads to why Jonah was told to warn them. Let's take a look here. The evil side of Nineveh, even though Nineveh was beautiful, rich and powerful, they were also evil. So let's look at some of the ways. Let's look to the left, sorcery. You see that first one, you see the first young man, sorcery, magic, witchcraft. And the second picture, stealing. A lot of people stealing. Then fighting, just fighting for nothing. Just get into the middle of the, of the, of the, of, of, of where they, even have the food at, and just start beating one another up for no reason of a, no reason at all. Rape, rape was really horrible in Nineveh. Killing of their own people for no reason of all. Look what's going on now. They even now they use they use their own people as a human shield. That's how horrible uh, Nineveh was. Reckless living, violence, idolatry. Illicit sex and perverted and corruption and greed. That's a lot of evilness in this so-called uh, city. And God still loves them. If you feel that God should still love them, give me a thumbs up. Anybody think that God should still love them? Amen. That's right. Even though... Nineveh was wicked. God still loved them. And this is where Jonah comes into the scene. So if you look to the, if you look at Jonah to the left, he's beginning, he's receiving the word from the Lord. But if you look at his face faded in the back, he looks angry. Why? Let's check and see what's going on with him. Ah, look what we got going on here. I have to move you. I got you all on the way across. All right, there we go. All right. So you can imagine when the Lord told 
uh, Jonah, I need you to go to Nineveh and warn the city. I need you. I love them, and I want to uh, want you to go to the city and warn them. And if you look in your Bible, uh, I have to find it. For, I have to find it in a few minutes. Uh, one second, everybody. The Lord wanted to, he told Jonah to go down to Nineveh and warn these people. And if you look at the first one, he looked like he cut out running. He didn't want to do it. And can you imagine what was going through his mind? Look at the first one. No, I will not go there. Destroy this. You destroy the city, Lord. These your people. Bury it. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Do what you do. And, and also, he probably said, leave me out of it. I don't want to do your dirty work. You do it. This is your. Don't ask me to do it. You do it. But God don't need any. He doesn't need, uh, he, he doesn't need any of us to do anything. He doesn't even have to come down and blow his horn. That's why he sent you. He sent Jonah. He wanted Jonah to go down. Prophet Jonah at that. It wasn't plain John, Jonah. It was Prophet Jonah. And Jonah fled to Tarsh, rose up to flee. That's um, Jonah 1 and 3, which means he was doing everything he could to get out of the city and to get away from God because he didn't want to do what God had asked him or told him to do. Jonah 1, uh, 4 through 16, but I'm going to read Jonah 1 and 4. But the Lord sent out, as if you see Jonah to the left, he's running, trying to get out of Dodge. You don't want to have nothing to do with that. He's like, bump this, I'm gone. If the Lord, if you want to do it, you do it. I don't want to do it. Now, all of you all know that you can't hide from God. You can't hide from God. God sees all. He said that he's got the, he's, he's all over. His eyes is everywhere. He sees you going. He sees you coming. He sees you in bed. He sees you behind closed doors. He sees that when you're telling the truth, he sees you when you're not telling the truth. He sees all. I don't know what Jonah called himself doing by running. And that's what he did. He cut out running. But the Lord sent out. Well, let me let me back up. So Jonah runs away from the Lord. And while he runs away, he, he finds a boat that was going to a faraway city, which we said in the beginning, of 2,500 miles away of Tarnish. How many know you can't hide from God? Lift your hands. How many know that you can't hide from God? You can't hide from God. This man paid money for a trip <laughs> and got on the boat. Going to the left, by the way, not, not to the right, but he's going to the left. So in, if we go back to this slide, right here, where it says Joppa, all he had to do was follow God's plan and go to Nineveh. But no, homeboy wanted to do it. He wanted to get away from God and get on a boat and travel 2,500 miles out of the way to get away from God. To get away from God. Lord, help us. Jonah runs away from the Lord, find the boat that was going to a faraway city. You can't have forgot. Pay money for the trip. He even paid money to go all the way to the left. Probably wouldn't have cost him nothing if he would have went to the right. Got on the boat, went down below, and then he had nerve to go to sleep. Got on the boat, get to the bottom, and he conks out. Not realizing that God sees it all. But all of a sudden, there was a great storm on the sea. The scripture says, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. God did that. There was nothing wrong on the sea. These guys didn't have any problems. They was, they was doing their own thing. On the boat, getting ready to go to where they need to go, drop off cargo. It was calm, y'all. It was calm. It was cool. But then you get prophet Jonah, Jonah to get on the boat at the bottom, and he's sleeping. But all of a sudden, there was a great storm on the sea. Storm was very strong, and the boat was ready to break apart. 
So you know all the men on the boat is having a fit. What in the world is going on? We was doing fine on the ship. Now, the last bullet says uh, cargoes on the boat was being thrown off the ship to stop it from sinking. This, this storm was so bad that it started sinking. And all of the money that they put in um, on the ship, which were cargoes, they was finally getting ready to drop those off and get paid. Now they can't get paid because they've thrown the cargoes off the ship. You, you see what kind of problem Jonah's starting with other people? Throwing the cargoes off the ship, which means somebody's not going to have a job tomorrow when the boss finds out what happened to my merchandise. Sir, we had to throw it off the boat to keep it from sinking. Lord help us. Lord help us. The men beginning to question, why is this happening to us? They approached Jonah, went downstairs, probably by a whole crowd of them and said, what have you done? And Jonah comes clean. He had to confess and he had to tell them, it's my fault. I'm running from the Lord. The Lord has asked me, the Lord has told me to go to Nineveh, which is the other side, to tell them and give them a warning that, that, he, that if they don't get it right, God was going to destroy the city. And I tried to run away from him. He came clean. So do you think that the men were happy about that? No. They just got rid of all of their hard work, all their hard earnings for their families, children they had to feed. And so the men got together and look what you see on the screen. They threw him overboard. I would have threw him overboard too. Threw him overboard. Even though the Lord had told Jonah to share a message of repentance, he wanted them to repent with, with Nineveh, Jonah had no desire to participate in their salvation. Now, he's a prophet. He's a prophet, true prophet of God, as the word says, but he didn't even want to tell them to repent because he knew how horrible that city was. That takes you back to Sodom and Gomorrah. You all remember how bad that was. And the, and, and, and the lot, lot was out there. Lord, if you just spare the city, if you give me 10, well, give me nine, one. If, you, if there's one, God says, I'll spare the city. Jonah had no desire to participate in their salvation. Imagine being given the opportunity to preach one of the world's greatest revivals with the assurance of widespread repentance. He didn't even want to go and spread the gospel. Now, how can you be a prophet, fivefold ministry, and don't want to tell them what thus said the Lord? Somebody witnessed to you and told you to repent or told me to repent. I need right now, I want everybody to talk to themselves right now and say, I am going to embrace the call. Evangelist, you have your hand up. You have a question? Oh, okay. Everybody tell yourself, just point to yourself and say, I am going to embrace the call. Come on, say it to yourself. I need everybody to say it to themselves. I am going to embrace the call. Whatever the call may be, we want, we want to embrace the call. Isn't God amazing? When there is a call on your life, you cannot escape. I don't care what you do. You may be the only one that can lead them to Jesus Christ. Remember, he saved your life. He saved your soul. He called you out of darkness. So never tell God, I ain't going. Because when you see what happened to Jonah, I bet you change your mind next time God asks you to do something, Lord. Lord, help us. Amen. When they threw him overboard, look what's waiting on him. Look how ugly that thing is. He's probably uglier than that. That's an ugly fish. When they threw him overboard, I imagine Jonah probably said, I'll just get ate up by the fish. I don't care. I'll just get ate up by the fish. I'm done. I don't have to go and do the call. But the unthinkable happened. 
he found himself going down into the sea, being swallowed by a great fish and heading even deeper into the depths of the sea. Sometimes when you don't do what God say do, you'll find yourself in a place that, that you wish you could have followed what he said at first. Now, all he had to do was answer the call. Now this man is sitting in the belly of a fish, of a fish designed by God. He was in the belly of a fish for three days. Jonah's life was a real downer. I know he's not happy now. Everybody open your mouth and say three days deep, three days deep, three days deep in a nasty fish, not knowing what's in them. There could be bodies in there, dead fish, saliva, um, uh, uh, those things, that, those weeds, all of that. And you're sitting in fish that are dead, just sitting in him. He must be a pretty big fish in order for him to swallow. That just let you even see that regardless of how deep in sin you are, how many know that God can still rescue you, depending on how deep you really are. My God, my God. In the midst of this terrible ordeal, Jonah knew the Lord was, was with him in the watery version of hell. I can imagine it being hell for Jonah. How would you feel if you're sitting in the middle of a fish knowing that, Lord, I should have did what you asked me to do. Now I'm sitting in the belly of a fish. He probably couldn't hardly breathe. It was probably stinking, had an odor. I don't know if the, I don't know if he was sitting on his teeth. <laughs> I don't know where he was, but he was sitting in the middle of the fish. Look how ugly he is. That'll scare me half to death. Jonah had gone down about as far as hum, human, humanly possible. It kind of brings my mind back to the story of the prodigal son. And when the prodigal son spend up everything, he, you know, dad, I want to spend this money before you die. He gave him his money, sent him on his way, and he spent it all. He did everything he was big and bad enough to do. And he ended up to the lowest of the lowest, and that's in the pig pen. But when he came to himself, he knew I had to go home. I'm quite sure Jonah's probably dealing with that probably right about now. Jonah had gone down about as far as humanly possible. The height of his rebellion had taken him down to the bottom of the mountain, all because he rebelled. And if you go back to the first slide, when God had told him to go, he had already rebelled and said, I ain't going. I don't want to go. You do it. Bury them. He was being rebellion. He was going against God. God told him to do one thing, and he was doing his own thing. Amen. Jonah's plight brings to mind the words of the psalmist. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. That's Psalms 139 and 8. God is everywhere. <laughs> He's everywhere. Thankfully, the fleeing Jonah realized he could not escape the Lord. How he going to get out of the fish? He couldn't escape him. How is he going to get out? He can't get his own self out. He can't knock on the on the fin and say, oh, let me out. He is there for three days. That's too much long. That's too much for me. I'm sorry. I couldn't deal with five minutes in a fish. Look, the only time I see my fish, it better be frying, Sister Allen. It better be frying in a pan. Evangelist Pamela, it better be frying. <laughs> Thankfully, the fleeing Jonah realized he could not escape the Lord. In his odd predicament, Jonah remembered the Lord. He remembered the God of mercy. Aren't you glad that God have mercy, that you can cry out to him at any time, and you know that God can hear your cry? In his prayer, the prophet promised to sacrifice. Now remember, remember this. The prophet promised to sacrifice unto the Lord. Just remember that with the voice of thanksgiving because Jonah recognized that salvation 
come from the Lord. Everybody say amen to that. Amen to that. Ah, oh, now Jonah getting serious. Look what he's doing now. He wasn't studying prayer a while ago after he came clean and now he got his eyes closed. And I want to read, I want to read this prayer. This prayer is taken from Jonah 2, chapter 2, verses 2 through 9. But I want to read it to you in easy ready version. He says, I was in very bad trouble. Just, just think about that when you're praying. Think about these words. I called to the Lord for help. And he answered me. I was deep in the grave. I cried to you and you heard my voice. Verse three, you threw me into the sea. This is what Jonah is thinking, but think about things in your life. Your powerful waves splashed over me. I went down, down into the deep sea. Have anybody ever been down way deep, deep in sin that you didn't know how you was gonna pull yourself out? The waters was all around me. And Forrest says, then I thought, now I must go where you cannot see me. But I continue looking to your holy temple for help. Yeah. Verse five. The sea water closed over me. The water covered my mouth. I'm quite sure there was a lot of water in the fish at the time. And can you imagine that the water keeps lifting up? probably real tall against him. He's probably getting scared. And he said, I couldn't breathe. I went down, down into the deep sea. Seaweed wrapped around my head. Oh, Jesus. Lord have mercy. I was at the bottom of the sea, the place where the mountains began. This is him praying. I thought I was locked in this prison forever. But the Lord God, the Lord my God took me out of my grave God, you gave me life again, even with the new birth, even the sin, the dirt, the shame. That's why Jesus died on the cross for us so we can live again. We were all in a place where Jonah was, whether you called or not. Number seven, my soul gave up all hope. But then I remembered the Lord. I prayed to you. This is him praying. And you heard my prayers in your holy temple. Aren't you glad that God hear your prayers? It may not be answered the way you want them, but thank God that he can hear your prayers. Some people worship useless idols, but these statues never help them. I will give sacrifices to you and I will praise and thank you. I will make special promises to you and I will do what I promise. Salvation only comes from the Lord. And I'm going to end this prayer and say, in Jesus' name, amen. That's a prayer. That's a prayer from the heart. Deep prayer. Hallelujah. We, too, must repent of our rebellion. We've all been rebellion at one time. Myself, we've all been rebellion. Not towards one another, but to God. But we, but we know, even we know, we still refuse what God has asked us to do. We want God to take us higher heights and deeper depths. But then rebellion creeps in. When it creeps in, we found ourselves descending to the wrong kind of depth. We headed in the opposite direction of God's plan. If Jonah would have went to the right, which was the right way, which was only so many miles away, homeboy goes to the left, which took him way out of the will of God. He was running away from God with his rebellion self. During these troubled times of our own making, we must seek the face of the Lord. This is in your prayer time, in your fasting time, uh, saints of God, while you're praying and while you're meditating. Ask God, when you're, seeking, when you're seeking his face, ask God to remove any and everything out of you that is not like him. It could be, it doesn't have to be rebellion. It could be something else, slowfulness, unfaithfulness to him. That's what he's there for. Seek him on your behalf. We, mu we must have the spirit of Jonah, you all. Jonah had a deep prayer. We should all have a prayer like Jonah had. We must repent of our rebellion. We must recognize that salvation only comes from the Lord. 
So while Jonah was sitting in the well, I mean, sitting in the fish, the Lord saw how sorry he was. Because of Jonah's repentance, there you go, grace and mercy, God gave Jonah a second chance, causing the fish to spit Jonah out. Blech. Vomit. I don't like vomit. I get sick when somebody starts vomiting. I get sick myself. But can you, and the things that you throw up out of your mouth, but can you imagine being vomited out by a fish? Mm -mm. No. Uh -uh. The mission, however, remained the same. When he still came out of the fish, he still got to answer God. Now just think about that. Go on, get the vomit on out, clean yourself up, because you still got to go. The prophet still needed a journey to Nineveh and preach a message of repentance. Jonah thought he was getting away, but he wasn't. But when he repented, and the Lord spake unto the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. That's the Bible. Jonah 17. I know that's wrong. Because there ain't no 17 chapters. That's my that's a that's a typo. Because if you look into Jonah, Jonah is only four chapters. <laughs> so that's a typo. Amen. Nevertheless, Jonah finally ended up in the city and he preached the message of repentance. He walked around and he saw all these different things going on in the city. Everything that we talked about in the beginning, the sexual acts, the, 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 uh, the, 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 violate, the, the violence, the stealing, witchcraft. He had to send a warning to them. Warning of the overthrow of the city. 40 days. Somebody's going to take over the city or the city will be destroyed if you don't change. God gave them 40 days. That's a long time to change. Four, zero. If things didn't change. Okay. <laughs> We don't have that much patience with one another with our forgiveness. We they they gotta you gotta they better they better they better ask me for forgiveness right now. But God giving them 40 days. The ultimate, the ultimate work. The people proclaimed the fast and all participated from the greatest to the least. Even the king put on sackcloth and ashes. The people trusted in the possibility that the Lord would turn and repent of his fierce anger, they would be saved. So they were all praying. They were everything that he told them to do, to repent, put on the, the, the sackcloth, everything, because they didn't want that city to be destroyed. Now let's see what Jonah did then. Uh, as I was reading, I thought maybe Jonah was done. I was like, yay, Jonah, you did it. You did exactly what God told you to do. Uh-huh. Yeah, let's let's see what's going on now. But Jonah still hated them and wished for their destruction. He's walking away with anger. Then he questions God. Think about that. Jonah did what God asked him to do. He gave them the message, but he still had hatred in his heart against them. And he wanted them dead, even after he did what God told him to do. He still wanted God to destroy them. Jonah, however, still wished to see. Look, he even wanted to see it. <laughs> he wanted to see them destroyed. He wasn't going to do it and walk away. He wanted to go out somewhere and see it, just sit there. Like fireworks. I want to see what God is going to do. The perplexed prophet prepared a booth on the east. Look at that. Side of Nineveh and waited for the fireworks to start. He was determined to see them punished. Saints of God, we don't ever want to get to the point where we want to see people punished. Regardless of how saved we think we are, if somebody make you angry enough all you want to do is see them punished by God. But that's not what we want to do. We don't want to do what Jonah did. 
So Jonah runs out and he gets up under this, he sees this shade, sits up under it, and he enjoying the shade. That's Jonah, that's Jonah four and six. And the Lord prepared a, a growl, a, 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 a groin, and made it to come up over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head. Cause it was hot out there. The sun was beating him up to deliver him from his grief. And look what God gave him mercy again after he said that I wanna sit here and watch these people perish. And Jonah was exceedingly glad of the glory. So he's sitting there just enjoying, you know, looking out, waiting, just, just waiting, on the, waiting on the fireworks waiting on God to destroy the city. And it came to pass in verse eight. No, in verse seven, it says, but God prepared a worm when the when he rose up the next day, it smote the gourd that it withered. So if you look at the second clip, the tree withered and fell. Jonah like, oh, really, Lord? You're going to do this to me? And verse eight says, and when it came to pass, when the sun did arise, that God prepared a wind that came through and the sun beat it on the head of Jonah. And you all know that hot wind is not fun. You all know how hot wind is. You got all this wind blowing and it's all hot. And the sun beat upon Jonah and he fainted <laughs> and wished himself to die. And said, if you look to the right, if you look to the last clip to the right, now he's angry. Now he was happy at first when he had the shade, but now he's angry at God. Which way do you want it? What about being ungrateful? I think he's being ungrateful. God supplied that for this man to be under the shade. Now he's angry at God. And he has nerve to say in verse 8, it is better for me to die than to live. God is like, who does that remind you of? Does that remind you back in the Moses days when people was always complaining? But even during this time, God teaches Jonah a lesson, even when he was angry. And that's where the question comes when God says, do you have a right to be angry at a plant? Why are you mad at a plant? The next day, Jonah felt as though tragedy had st struck him. A worm ate the gourd. We talked about that. The gourd withered, removing the blessed shade that covered Jonah. The Lord sent the strong east wind to trouble Jonah as the sun beat down upon him. Jonah wished to die. The Lord questioned whether Jonah should feel angry due to the loss of the gourd, acting like a little kid. Why? 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 You said you love me. Why you give me shade and you take it away? How dare you do? I can imagine him yelling at God like that. Jonah claimed he had the right to be angry. My God, even unto death. Then the Lord showed Jonah the lesson. He had wanted to teach the error prophet, earring prophet by providing the gourd. Because if it wasn't for that, he wouldn't have no shame. Shame on him. Then he looks up in the heavens and is probably saying all kinds of things. And God says, do you have a right to be angry over a plant? Really now? Really now? Jonah had pity on the gourd, even though he did not look at this, even though he didn't work for it. And he didn't make it grow. God did that. The gourd sprung up in the night. All this happened the night before because where he was earlier, there was nothing there but sand and rock. God provided him for that. Even though he went out, gave the message, then he turned around and got angry and still hated him. God had to teach him a lesson. If Jonah cared so much for the gourd, then the Lord asked the prophet, why the Almighty should not spread the great city of Nineveh with all his people? Why? Why should he not spare the great city? There are no limits to God's love. Nevertheless, 
we may wonder why God would go to such length to save a wicked city like Nineveh in an even empire. Perhaps the Lord chose to show such mercy to teach us a lesson. We all make mistakes. Sadly, sometimes our sins seem too great that we think we have gone too far beyond even the reach of God's love. But how many know that God loves us anyway? We sing a song that says, if, I, if he have to reach way down, Jesus will pull me, Jesus will pull me up. We may have had the same feelings about those who wronged us. The Lord, however, calls us to go against our human nature and rejoice in God's mercy for our enemies. Even if we feel like they deserve punishment, and sometimes we feel that people deserve it. But we're not God. That's not our job. That's God's job. The Lord give it, the Lord take it away. That's not our job. Let God deal with them. We cannot know all the struggles they face. Additional struggles or troubles would not actually help them to be better people, but mercy might. Therefore, I will rejoice when God shows mercy to not only to my enemies, but I need God to show mercy to me, just like he did Jonah. Even if others don't think it makes sense, everything that Jonah went through made no sense to him. I will rejoice in God's mercy, in God's, I can't read that, uh, of my enemies. So I want to go back, and that's our lesson. I'm going to get some comments in a minute. I want to go back to this self-check. Have anyone, now that you know the full story, we went deep. Have anyone ever made you angry to the point that you just want God to punish them? Yeah. Jonah did. That's what Jonah thought. Mm -hmm. Does anyone in your family make you feel that they don't deserve your forgiveness? We all been there. Nor God. Yeah. But God forgives you. <laughs> I hear you, Sister Allen. <laughs> but God forgives you. It's not fair to tell your family member, I don't forgive you. What are you going to do when you come to God and ask for forgiveness? And he say, he turns a, a ear and don't want to hear it. My God. Is it right for you to be angry at people when they don't even belong to you? These are God's people. And then you may have to be the one to witness them. The way that things are going on in this world now, we got to witness to our family members. We want them saved. God saved you. He saved each of us. What about the person that is so evil that you would you would do anything to not be around him? Look at jo Jonah. He didn't even want to be around him. He was angry at God. Angry at God because he didn't want God. He wanted God to destroy them. But they have a right to repent. They have 40 days to clean it up. 40 days to clean it up. So I just want you to realize that each of us have a little Jonas in us. None of us are perfect. All of us have a little, may or may not have a little. If you don't have a little Jonah in you, you got some of the other people that were dealing with deep issues in your heart that we must release. And that's the that's the end of our lesson, three days deep. Pastor Fields, oh I'm done. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Wow, that was absolutely powerful. Powerful, powerful. Amen. I hopefully everybody got something out of that. And hopefully you can just put your hands together and give God some praise for that. I'm telling you, that was an awesome, awesome, awesome lesson. Man, I'm just I'm just overwhelmed by that. She done an excellent job. And I'm just not saying that because of She's my wife, but I was sitting there as a, I was sitting there as a student, and I was just listening like everybody else had my, I, I put pulled my little Bible out and I was uh, <laughs> reading along as best I could, following along as best I could, and even though this is this looks like a cartoon and animated, what's being presented here is these are deep, deep. Uh, uh, issues, uh, lessons to deal with our deep, deep issues. And if anybody was to say that they don't have issues, then I, 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 all I can say for you is uh, I'm praying for you. Maybe you need to look deeper because if you are under the impression that you don't have anything, 
uh, you're perfect. And I heard the, our instructor tell us several times that none of us are perfect. We're not perfect. And that means me as a pastor, and that definitely means you in the pew. We're not perfect. We're in need of God's mercy and God's grace. I won't, uh, I won't uh, belabor the point, but I will let you know that we, we need both of those because we need God's grace and his mercy. One, a man deals with uh, God uh, derailing the judgment that we rightly deserve. And then the other one has to do with God freely giving us something that we don't deserve in terms of his grace and his mercy. We deserve judgment, but look what God gives us instead. He gives us, amen, he gives us grace. And so I thank God for that, and he has mercy upon us. And so I wanted to just kind of uh, uh, state that. And I believe our instructor wanted to get a few comments, but I, I want to do this if I can, because we are so blessed on tonight. Not only you in the presence of your brothers and sisters, but I thank God that we have a dear friend that's online tonight. And I know I may be, amen. I might be kind of uh, uh, putting her on the spot. But she, she has been a dear friend of ours throughout the years, long before we ever thought yeah. about pastoring. She was she was a friend of ours and a person of, mm -hmm. amen, evangelist, Pastor Kay Faison. So I want to just, amen, extend an opportunity for her to just uh, say praise the Lord and, amen, share with us as the Lord may have laid on her heart something out of this. Amen, lesson. Pastor. Yes. If um, right, right before she speak, if, if it's okay, I just want to properly introduce her. She is now right. pastoring the new ministry, right. her and her husband, a man called Higher Praise Higher Apostolic Praise. Church of, out in the Carolinas, you all, out in the Lord Carolinas. Carolinas. The Lord had called her out, a man, to do a work. I thank God she didn't do what Jonah did. I'm glad she didn't uh, go to the left. Point, good point, good point. <laughs> Amen for that. But her husband, Elder Allen, a, new, a newly elect um, Elder Allen is working alongside of her so we just love her we've been knowing her for a very long time and um she's been my sister she's not my friend she's been my sister and i praise god for her and we want to give her words to say and then we'll talk to everybody else amen amen <laughs> praise the amen. lord everyone can you hear me okay we hear you yes clear. amen <laughs> amen praise the lord we give honor to uh, you're very fine, Pastor, my friend, my brother, amen, Pastor Anthony Fields and Lady Luana Fields, and I see Overseer, Overseer Mama Inez on here, I call her, amen, Evangelist uh, Pamela, good to see you all, and Mother, everyone in your respective places, we say praise the Lord. We just got off our Bible study, and I remember that we are our <clears throat> ahead of you all, and I, when I saw the title of Lady Fields, I said, oh, I need to, I need to hear that, so I thought about it and I said, let me jump over here and hear what I can hear. I figured when she talked about those three days, I said, she must be talking about Jesus in the earth and she talking about Jonah in the well. So <laughs> <laughs> right, that's true. That's so, true. so we okay. praise God. We bit. praise God for it. Uh, very, uh, what I did see in here is very interesting. And I, and I love to actually love the, uh, the uh, uh, layout that you had, Lady Fields. It helps you. I'm a visual person, so it helps you to really <laughs> grasp the lesson when you're teaching. And you can see, amen, I, I can grab stuff a whole lot. And I mean, it's very unique. And I was like, wow, that's neat. I was checking it out. Praise the Lord. But I enjoy what I heard. And I can surely relate to the fact that there are some times when we feel like, you know, God ought to get people, get them, get them, get them, get them. Hallelujah. But at the end of the day, that is none of our business. That's the truth. That's God's business. And he knows what he's doing. Hallelujah. He knows yes. how to straighten us. That song say he gonna straighten he gonna straighten us all out here after a while for real if we ain't doing what we supposed to do. Real. Being what we're supposed to be. Hallelujah. So he can straighten me out because I just want to be ready when he calls for Amen. me. Hallelujah to God. So we're grateful to be on here. Amen with you all tonight. And I said as much as I can remember that you guys are an hour behind us. I, we get off at 8 30. I said, I can jump on and catch what I can catch sometime. And even though I'm down here in the Southeast, praise God. I thank God for technology. Amen. Thank Amen. God for technology. And I have, still have a way to be connected to God's people. So thank you for the time to say something. 
And uh, you all keep doing what you're doing. Pray for us as we're building up higher praise at the Stock Church. We will have our first in-person service next month on February 25th. And so we just doing what God called us to. You you can all now. I didn't I didn't do as bad as Jonah, but I did delay it for some years. But here we go. Hallelujah. We've been we've been to walk this thing out. So y'all pray for us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. Awesome. Wow. wow. That's, that is something. That is definitely something. But thank God. God All is right. patient with us. God is patient Amen. with us. Amen. We're going to, uh, we, we've been on schedule here, but I do want to at least acknowledge those that are online. Amen. And I'm going to ask you to continue to uh, participate in our uh, consecration month. I don't have the schedule up here just yet, but um, I'll, I can I can tell you what we got going on here. Uh, as you know, the way we have our consecration schedule uh, set up set up is for uh, it's intended to have something that you can do and be involved with every day. And throughout the month, and our services have been divided into both virtual as well as in-house. Uh, and just to give you a rundown of the schedule for those of you that don't know, and just in case you are interested in joining us at another time, on Monday nights, starting with Monday nights at uh, 7 o'clock p.m., we show a movie, a gospel movie. This uh, month's movie that we've been showing We've been breaking it into installments. The first installment we had on this uh, following Monday. The name of the movie is, uh, let me switch back over here, uh, First Lady. The name of the movie is uh, A Question a question of Faith. And anyone who says that they don't, they, they've never asked God a question, you, you, you haven't got close enough, amen. You haven't listened, you haven't had the experience Keep on, amen, no matter how long you walk with the Lord, there are going to be some questions because God says his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And because of that disconnect and us knowing what's on the mind of God, we're going to have some questions. Don't always understand why it is he's allowed both good and bad to enter our life. And so our faith sometimes comes into question. We question our faith. And sometime our faith comes into question. And so this movie uh, is a, a excellent movie so far. Spoiler alert, we we're not gonna we're not gonna ask uh, Sister Francis. She's seen the movie and I've challenged her not to spoil <laughs> it. Don't spoil it. But thanks be to God, it is an excellent movie. So on Monday nights we will we show a movie. On Tuesday night, in-house Bible class, Wednesday night virtual. We fat, that's our fast day. We ended with uh, prayer online virtually. And Thursday, as you can see, at least for the consecration month, we moved our Sunday school to Thursday evening. And Friday, we're back in the house of the Lord for in-house high praise and worship and words of exhortation by one of our associate ministers. Saturday, every other Saturday, we're involved in a cleaning project at the church. Uh, so this Saturday, you're going to have Saturday off. Next Saturday, get those brooms and mops and all of that stuff and be prepared to give the house of the Lord a good cleaning. Uh, and Sunday morning, since we don't have uh, Sunday school, 9 o'clock a.m., amen, we, uh, 9, we're going to be in fire starter prayer, which will preface our morning worship that starts at 10.30. And if this Sunday is any indication of what, uh, if last Sunday is any indication of what this Sunday is going to be, I don't want to miss it because it was on and popping, as they will say. There was a fire burning, and I'm so glad I got burnt. Amen. Hallelujah. So glad I got burnt. So that's the schedule for the week. Uh, the last three uh, days Pastor, of. Pastor, yes. Pastor, tomorrow night, um, Evangelist Clemens. We'll yes. be giving our words of exhortation. Yes, so Amen. And we will be in the sanctuary on tomorrow night. Absolutely. So Amen. keep praying your prayers. We've been dodging snowflakes and raindrops, but thanks be to God, he's allowed us 
to continue the schedule, and we've been we've had a great time, great time in that. So I encourage those of you to continue, continue uh, uh, supporting these virtual services. The last three nights we're going to be involved in a virtual revival, and it just so happens that man, and I, I I'll be calling you. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, keep 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 your phone on. Keep your phone on, uh, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Those last three nights, amen, we amen. We are uh, looking for a great time in the Lord. And I pray that you all will continue to support that and come hungry, come thirsting, come thirsting from a word from the Lord. I just want to acknowledge, before we get ready to roll off of here, I want to go down the road. I want to acknowledge each and every one of you in your own respective places. Amen, amen. Just wave your hand, Evangelist uh, Pamela, up there at the top. Just wave your hand. Amen, uh, Pastor. I mean, uh, <laughs> Evangelist Clemens. Uh, amen. I know she can just say behind that, behind that crown and that beautiful picture is a smiling face. So we want to acknowledge her and say praise the Lord. Uh, Sister Hibbler, just wave your hand if you don't mind. Look at her. Amen. She's on with her tablet tonight. Sister Brenda, I'm looking at you. Just wave your hand. Who else am I seeing down there? Mother Walker, you somewhere. Wave your hand. Look at Mother Walker down there, y'all. Uh, let's see who else am I not missing. Uh, Sister Gavin, she's working. She's working, but she's there somewhere, and I can imagine she's waving her hands, probably shouting in the hospital, but that's all right, y'all. Uh, did I leave off anybody? Uh, let's see. And Lady Fields, of course. I see you up there. Done an excellent job. So wave your hand one more time. Amen. Wave your wait. Uh, she didn't see me. She didn't hear me. There she is. She gave me the two fingers. I'm glad it wasn't one. Thank God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, y'all. We are getting ready to roll hey. off. Yes. Pastor, um, I had you, 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 you missed something. Um, we had wanted each of everyone to give small remarks. We had said that earlier. I wanted to know what they learned from the lesson. Okay. Did you change your mind? It's just eight nineteen. We usually be done by eight thirty. So I'm going to go right ahead. I'm going to turn you we back usually, over we to usually, the hands of the facilitator yeah. real quick to get yeah. your questions, comments. If you're going to make a comment, please limit your comment. Amen. Yes. Limit your comment to yes. no more than two minutes. Amen. Keep keep this train rolling so that by eight thirty, with yeah. the help of the Lord, we be yeah. out of here. Back into your hands, uh, yeah. Lady Fields. Well, I was thinking of one minute, so okay, well, uh, maybe see, we can I, make I it there. Have great. One yeah. minute. That's it. That's the new <laughs> number. One minute. Go right ahead, uh, Lady yeah. Fields, and acknowledge those. Evangelist uh, Bernard, I'm going to start with you. I know the way that you were looking. I know you had some things on your mind. Tick tock. Hey, man, we want to hear. Oh, thank you, Pastor. Go right ahead. <laughs> Unmute your mic. <laughs> uh, try it one more time. Unmute. You're almost there. There it is. There you go. Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, the yes, Lord. I. God. I thank God for uh, uh, uh just doing wonderful things on tonight. Um, praise the Lord, Pastor Faison. <laughs> Truly, I thank God for giving me uh, a a a on time lesson again because. My my mind is saying forgiveness is divine and obedience is the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you. Wonderful, Amen. wonderful pastor. Amen. <laughs> wonderful evangelist. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Uh, evan uh, evangelist Clements, I know you're there. <laughs> to God be the glory. Evangelist Clements. Evangelist. Might. She go to sleep. All right, Mother Walker, we're gonna switch to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to let everyone know. Yes, that's. I mean, it was awesome. And first lady, those four questions, like you said, almost like you said, fell on my head because all one of those, every last one of them, I can relate to have touch. You know, feelings through. So. And that's definitely something I want God to help me in all those different ways because they can get overwhelming sometimes. But you know, mm -hmm. I thank God knowing that he can work with me through this and get me through it, you know, as long as I, mm -hmm. you know, and I do, I really ask him, and I know you try, I mean, it's just, I need to listen more and get it, you know, get 
tune into him more so I can do better. And I thank Amen. you for that first lady. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Sister Gavin, can you talk on your job? Okay. Sister Francis? Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Praise okay. Go ahead, Sister Gavin. Praise the Lord. Okay, praise the Lord. I have enjoyed the lesson. I listened on my way down the highway, and I can tell you, you said being transparent. I, I live that every day. How I want the Lord to take care of stuff in my life, and oh, I wish this would hurry, be over. So I understand, and I have to get myself checked every day. So I thank God mm -hmm. for the lesson. I enjoyed it, and I am signing off. I just made it home. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whoop. Whoop. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Sister Allen, anything? Okay. Sister Hibbler? Uh, keep trying, Sister Hibbler. You're almost there. Hey, man, we work with the same There she goes. Praise the Lord. There she is. <laughs> I thank and praise the Lord for the lesson as well. And I know it, it hits home, but I'm learning now to um, pray, you know, don't pray against anyone. I pray for them that the Lord will just deliver them, that the Lord will keep me humble and submissive to his will because um, I know that, you know, we have faults, we have things to overcome as well. And we just pray that we be examples and be lights wherever we go. And I know things happen in our lives. Um, Cause I know we have hurt someone, you know, before we got saved or however, but I just thank and praise the Lord for a mind to, you know, pray for someone versus praying against them and because we're not perfect and we're still striving and the law of uh, I think it's the law of the harvest that we don't have to pray against anyone because God has it under control and I thank praise yeah. the Lord for his word and I thank him for the uh, first lady fields for um, explaining that so well. And I'm asking the saints to pray for me that I'll just continue to be humble and submissive to his will and be found on his will in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Evangelist Clemens, did you ever get back on? Oh, she all right. It's not like her than that. Thing. Sister Brenda, anything you want to say? All right. Well, I don't know where Evangelist Clemens is. That's not like her. I hope she's all right. I've been texting her. We'll check on her. All right. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure she's all right. All right, Pastor. Thank you everybody for your for for tuning in to us. And we just we just want to be better. We want to do better. We want to even with our forgiveness, we want to do better. I'm being transparent. That goes for me too. There's some things that um I'm dealing with, but I want to be better strive to be better. Uh, Pastor Kay, did you have something? I saw your thinking cap on over there. You good? All right. All right, Pastor. Amen. All right. Well, this has been an excellent night. I think I, I, I thank you for getting those remarks and comments. I learned even some more from the saints. So let's go ahead and bow our head in a word of prayer as we uh, take this one out. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on tonight. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your blood. God, I ask that you would allow your word, oh God, to resonate in our hearts, take root in our hearts, oh God, that it might transform us from the inside out. Oh God, I ask that you would be with us as we, amen, go through our days, our busy days, and the remainder of this evening. Keep our minds stayed on you, oh God. Bring us back safely at the appointed time, oh God, with a mind to serve you, a mind to do what it is that you have commissioned us to do. Until we meet again, oh God, keep us in the center of your will. It is our prayer for your people, as always, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen 
Amen. And if you wouldn't mind, just unmute your microphone and just put your hands together and give God some praise on your way out, on your way out. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody Thank say, you, I'm Jesus. on my way up. Well, I'm on my way out right now. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Look forward Thank to you. seeing you all again. Take care. Be blessed. Praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor K, I'll be talking to you. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look forward to it. All right. Take care, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, no, 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 Pastor, no. What's that, no? No, no. Evangelist Clemens been trying to get in, but he said that the uh, mute from your end is locked, and she couldn't speak. So I want to make sure she get her remarks in. Okay, I'm, I, I, I clicked on unmute. We still, we got, it's just 828. You got two minutes. All right, well, I unmute. Try, tell her try now. Tell her try to get Yeah, she's unmute. trying again. She's been trying to speak for the longest. And... Try it again. Tell her to unmute. Try to... Try it again, Evangelist Clemens. I don't want to close down without you. Try it again. She said it was locked. It, it said that the the host is not taking any. No, I am not. I mean, I am. I have been. Try it again. She's almost there. Tell her hit her on mute button. Hit, hit your on mute button. She can't seem to get in. Okay. Well. All right. Close your heart. He gonna hook you up next time. Well, you, well, we'll she well she said it. It kept saying that the the host. Yeah, I had to mute certain ones during the lesson to keep the noise down. Yeah, I know. Recording. Yeah, so, nothing, nothing All personal. Right. I know she know that. Well, we'll, oh, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll give you the opportunity next time. But we acknowledge you. Everybody yeah. be blessed again. Good night, everybody. Praise the Lord. Good night. Good mm -hmm. night. Praise the Lord.